Hello, my name is Mark, and I am here to show you how to use the do-it-yourself nicotine test kit to test the nicotine content in your e-liquid. Now, everything I say in this video is my opinion. Um, you can take it for what it's worth, uh, and your mileage may vary. Uh, but this is my opinion, and this is how I do it. Uh, people have asked how accurate is this test. Um, it depends on who you ask. Uh, some, uh, actually a chemist, uh, Kurt from ECF, um, says it is about 10, about 10 percent plus or minus accurate. I feel that if it is done properly and accurately, uh, you should be able to get into within plus or minus two milligrams um, instead of percentages. So if you did, a, if you tested a 100 milligram base NIC, uh, you could get 98 or 102, uh, which is only a variance of about two percent. But if you test like a, a 18 milligram base NIC, you get 16 or 20, which is actually closer to 20 percent. Um, so if done accurately and properly, uh, it should be within plus or minus two milligrams. Uh, what you need is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder with 0 0.1 graduations on it. You need 0.12N sulfuric acid, some bromothalmol blue, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, some distilled water, and it also helps if you have a mixing rod and one or more pipettes. Um, these supplies can be gotten at www.eliquidtest.com along with the, these testing procedures, uh, some tips, tricks, and actually some alternate testing methods. Uh, your distilled water can be gotten at your local grocery store. It's cheap, it's about $1.50 a gallon or so. Um, and it does need to be distilled. It can't be boiled water or filtered water or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get this test started here. Now the first thing you want to do is rinse your testing supplies well to make sure you get all contaminants out with the distilled water. I've already actually rinsed them a couple times. Um, but I'm just going to do a quick rinse here. Uh, if you have your pipette, you want to get that rinsed out as well. Um, I have some what's labeled 24 milligram unflavored nicotine. It is a 25-75 PG-VG mix. I'll give it a quick shake. Now I've been asked, can nicotine separate in the mixture? Um, the correct answer I got from chemists is no. However, um, about a month or two ago, I got some 36 milligram 100% VG mixture that actually tested to 54, and after I shook it up, it tested properly to 36. Um, I'm thinking either was it mixed fully in, uh, from where it came from, or maybe my testing could have been off uh, initially, uh, who knows, but that's what happened with me. So I like using the pipette because you can get it all the way down graduated cylinder. Okay, hold on. Let me shake out the excess water there. And you want to measure to the meniscus. That's the curved portion at the top of it there. Okay. So I got my nick in there. Okay, you want to add two drops of blue. Now, I like to add three or four drops just because it makes it easier to see the color change. Uh, people ask, can you use more? Um, Bromothalmol blue is actually is an acid in itself. However, based on my experience, I've done the test with 8, uh, 10, 12 drops and has not thrown the results off um, that much or at all. Uh, so, yes, you can, but don't overdo it. If you're testing high strength, let's say 100 milligram, then you will want to add like eight drops or so uh, because so much acid gets in there and it dilutes the solution. It's hard to read the color change from blue uh, to yellow, especially when it gets near the yellow. Now, uh, you're going to want to fill up the graduated cylinder to the three milliliter mark. Um, I'm using a different pipette. But if you use the same pipette that you used with your nicotine, make sure it rinsed out well. 
because you don't want to introduce additional nicotine in the solution, otherwise your results will be off. So I'm going to put it to the three millimeter mark, milliliter. At the bottom of the meniscus, take my stir rod that should that has a uh, L shape on the end, so I can just mix it well. Now for the test is basically what you want to do is you want to add your acid a couple drops at a time until your solution turns all yellow. It's going to start off blue, then it's going to turn green, then it's going to be like greenish yellow, and then when you get to the magic drop, it's going to turn um, all yellow. Now these are this is one factor where you can have off results uh, because if uh, you think something's full of yellow, it might not be, or if it is yellow, you might think it isn't. Um, but after doing the test a few times, you can tell the greenish yellow switch from greenish yellow to 100% uh, yellow. Now, since this is 24 milligram, I'm going to go ahead about add about 20 drops initially, because there's no reason for me to add one drop at a time because nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and swish it around. Now, if you don't have a stir rod, some people can swirl it, but if you have a thick solution in there, it's not going to mix well. And the top might be yellow, but the bottom might be blue. Uh, you don't want that. You want everything mixed real well. Um, and if you do have a 100% VG solution, you can add extra water in the beginning and, let's say, start at the 4 millimeter mark, because uh, it makes the solution more easier to work with. So right now, it's still blue. And a couple more drops. Now I like to leave my stir rod in the graduated cylinder because if I take it out, put it in, take it out, I am removing some liquid from the solution and that will lower my total volume at the end. And when you drip it down, make sure you don't get it on the sides, otherwise it'll be stuck on the sides. And if you and if you are swirling it, make sure you just don't make sure you don't shake it because if you shake it, you're going to get solution all up, up and down the graduated cylinder, which will uh, lower your volume, which will throw off your results. Now it might be hard to see this, so what I'm going to do after this is show you a close up, um, so you can so you can totally tell. Now if you hold up against a white piece of paper. Right now it's like greenish yellow. So I'm going to add a couple more drops. One, two. And I think that did it. Now it's a nice, it's a nice yellow. Um, and the stir rod is actually white, so it makes it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so now I have the graduated cylinder, and I want to read what the final volume is. It is 4.2. Okay, now before I go on, let me show you the close-up. Okay, I got my close-up here. I'm going to insert my one milliliter of nick to the meniscus uh, one more drop there we go it's kind of hard to tell but you see the, the bottom bubble is right on the 1.0 milliliter line the bottom part of the bubble it's kind of hard to tell I can see it. Add my blue. Now I'm going to add my water to the 3.0 milliliter mark. And there we go. Bottom of the meniscus there. Right about 3.0. Mix it up. Let's 
add some acid still very much blue now it's more of a green ish blue You can tell, but now it's a green ish yellow. I still see a little bit of green in there, might not be able to tell. So, another drop. I got a nice bright yellow solution get the air bubbles out and we are going to read it and it looks like it's right on 4.2 maybe a smidge less but basically 4.2 okay so we have our 4.2 now what we want to do is subtract what we started with we started with 3 milliliters. So I'm going to subtract 3 from 4.2, which will give me 1.2. That is how much acid I added to the solution. I'm going to multiply that number, 1.2, by the magic number of 19.47, and that gives me 23.36. Um, since the acid is two significant digit, digits, that gives me our two significant um, figures that gives me a milligram per milliliter content of 23 and this was supposed to be 24 it's within a couple mil uh, a couple milligrams of what it should be so I am uh, good with this so that is the test uh, you can check out www.eliquidtest.com for the instructions and supplies and also some alternate testing methods Thank you.